In Time Management for Mortals, Oliver Berkman asserts that when it comes to task management, you want to have an open tasks list where you can jot down your tasks coming up during the day and you have a closed task list where you can only have 10 items at a time and whenever you complete one of those 10 items, then you can move a task from your open list to your closed list. Recently, I created this Notion template that is called Time Management for Mortals. And this Notion template has a daily focus dashboard where you can keep track of your tasks, in particular, focusing on your closed list, which are those tasks that you decided to work on. So this is the daily focus dashboard. And here, this is the closed task list. And that's what the system works in Notion. You can watch an entire video working through this free template through the link in the description of this video. Now, I'm in Coda, coda.io, and I'm trying to recreate that concept, just focusing on the daily focus dashboard with the closed task list and using the functions of Coda to see what additions we can have and what features we can add to this overall concept of time management for mortals. So in this video, we're going to go through the closed, open and waiting on list based on Oliver Berkman's time management for mortals. And we will recreate that view in Coda, seeing what possibilities we have in Coda. So let's get started. This is a Coda page. And if you look at the structure here, we have this daily focus dashboard and we have some databases that I played around. But for this video, we're going to focus on the tasks database. So you can think of this as a database in Coda. They are called tables. And that's a table where we have all the tasks. And in daily focus dashboard, we have views of the tasks table on the page in here. And the idea of this dashboard is that we have it divided into three main sections. And you can see it from this outline here on the right hand side, we have the closed list, the open list and the waiting on list. And so these are headings that I created on the page here on the right hand side. You can see there is an outline that you can also hide where you can add by going to page options. And in here you can decide what you want to show or hide in the Coda page. In this case, we are showing the cover photo. We are not showing the page name and icon, which is hidden. And we are showing the outline, which we can also turn off. And then here we can decide what font we want, whether it's, be, whether it's standard or serif, the size of the font and the content alignment, which is set to auto. So right now here on the page, we have a heading one and it is centered through this menu here. And then in here we have a formula or better, a mix of text and formula. So there are two formula in here and these are inline formula, which is a very valuable feature in Coda because in Coda, when you're typing text, you can type equals and this opens up the formula box where you can write down an inline formula that mixes very well with any text that you're writing. And that's what I'm using in here to ensure that we can actually reference how many closed tasks you have so that you can see the number of those tasks in here and you can adjust accordingly in case you have more than 10 tasks and you want to be an extremist in Oliver Berkman's philosophy, then you can adjust yourself and rethink about your entire life right now. And the way this is set up is that first there is some string. So these are just words, text that I type on the page. Next up, there is this one. And you can see this as a gray background. And that's because that's a formula that I created typing equals and then adding this formula right here. Let's look at it better. That's a pretty straightforward formula. So here we have the tasks table referenced that you can create just by typing tasks. And here you can tab to reference the tasks table in Coda. And then we have dot, and this is useful when we wanna add a formula after a table in Coda. So in this case, we have from the task table count if the status is equal to closed. So we are telling Coda to count all those tasks where the status in the tasks table is equal to closed. And so once we have this formula, then here we have the number that is dynamically updated based on the closed tasks that you have. So if I were to add a new task in here, now you see the number is two. And here in the next part of the string, there is UR, that's a simple string that I typed. And there's another formula, well set. And that's an if statement. So in here, I'm telling Coda, look at the tasks table, count if the status is closed. So take all the tasks where the status is closed. And that's the same exact formula that we used in the first part of the statement. And then we tell Coda, look, if that number is less or equal than 10, then output well set. 
as a string. Otherwise, output over limit as a string. So that we can concatenate this text. And if we were to have more than 10 tasks in here, then that status would change to over limit. And so you are at least aware of what you're doing and how many items you have in this detailed view of your tasks that are closed. Beneath that text, there is also a button. And buttons as well are a powerful feature in Coda, especially when you want to make the user experience easier if you work in a team in particular. And you can create buttons by typing slash button. And in here, you can choose what type of button you want. But for the sake of this example, I just chose add row because that's a button that can add a new row to a table that we choose. And so in this case, if you look at the settings of this button here, you can see that the name of the button is new open task, and that's the backend name that I can reference in additional formula that I create. Then the label is add new open task. And the action here is add row. We want to add row to the table open list. You can see that's a linked view of the tasks database that I created, and that's already on the page. So you want to add task to the open list. And in here, we can already set default values if we want that task to get some specific values. For example, if you want the due date of that task to be equals now, then we can type that. And whenever we will add a new task, then the due date is going to be now. And then here we can choose whether we want to have the rows open directly whenever you add a new task or not. In this case, that is off. And then we can also add a rule to disable the button. But in this case, we don't need that. Here we can decide the size of the button as well as its color. And if you want to add an icon, that's the place to do that. And so in here, if I were to add a new task, add a new open task, you see one row added. And if you go all the way down to the open list, you can see that this is the task that we just added. And the due date is 99. Now, chances are, when you add the new task, you want to also add the name of that task. And that's why you want to have the option to edit that task directly from here. And so I'm right clicking in here and I'm going to do add row, open list. And then in here, I want to do open row for editing. Yes. So now whenever you add a new task, this pop-up window will show up. And here you can type the name of the task and the status is automatically open. Then you can link it to a goal and set the due date more properly. Then that task will be in your open list. And the open list is just the second section of this dashboard that is based on time management for mortals. And the open list is where you can see all your tasks where the status is open. That's a select option. And when you want to move a task from the open list to the closed list, then you can come here and just change the status so that this task will disappear from here and will come all the way here at the very top in your detailed view of the tasks table where you have all your closed tasks. And to delete a task, you can just click on the three dots right there and delete that task. And finally, there is waiting on because the status of a task can also be waiting on. So if I were to change the status, let's say I'm working on this task, task one from my detailed view, which is where the true action happens. And in here, the status is now waiting on. You can see this has now become yellow. And whenever I click out of this view, now the task has disappeared from my detailed view and is now showing up under waiting on. And in Coda as well, tables are composed of pages. And that's why you can open that page just like that to see all the details of it, as well as add any comments and see all the activities in this page. To create this detailed view, you can create a linked table view, which you can do by typing slash table. And then here you can choose, do you want to start a new table, so blank table, or do you want to pull data from an existing table? In my case, I chose the tasks table as the source table for this view. And then in here, under display, I went for the detail view. A detail view is this view right here where each task is a page and then you have a left sidebar menu where you can navigate through your tasks. And I chose this view because I think in line with the philosophy of Oliver Berkman in Time Management for Mortals, we want to focus on each task one at a time while still having the overview of the closed tasks on the left-hand side. And so in here you can set up your view. These are all the options. Then you have what type of display you want to have here on the main page. And you can set up the filters, sort, as well as all the columns to show or hide. And that really is it 
how to create a daily focus dashboard based on Oliver Bertman's time management for mortals and the key idea that you are finite and hence your task list is finite as well and you can only accept that and work on your closed tasks until you can. Thank you for watching and see you soon.